Hello friends and welcome to the Southern Mountain Kitchen. Today we're going to make a cheesy hash brown meatball ranch casserole. Yep, that title was definitely a mouthful. So what we're going to do is use everything on my counter to make this casserole. Now, one thing I've learned when I've seen people making casseroles before, whenever it calls for meatballs in it, they pull out a bag of frozen. No. I'm sorry, frozen are no way good compared to what you can make at home. And it's really not that much to make a meatball. But we're going to make our own meatballs from scratch so that way it's just easier to deal with. They taste better, you have control of the size of them, and it's not something that might be in the freezer getting freezer burned. We're just going to go for the real deal here. So we're going to start out with a pound of ground beef. Get that into a large bowl that we can mix in. Then we're going to add to this a third of a cup of Italian breadcrumbs. And then when we get that in there, we're gonna add one large egg. And then afterwards, we're gonna add some seasoning to this. And really, we're not putting much seasoning in because we're not trying to overload this with any outrageous seasoning because it's gonna be mixed in with a lot of other things in the casserole. We don't wanna overload it. So we're using a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of pepper. Now, wash your hands and go ahead and mix this up. Now, if you wanna wear gloves, wear gloves, it's your choice or you can do this by hand. Um, it's just something I do because every woman I've ever seen do this before use their bare hands. So it's perfectly fine, nobody's right or wrong, so we're not gonna dispute that. So go ahead after you've gotten this all mixed together here and we're gonna roll these into balls. Now try to stay kind of the same size on each one of these balls because I'm doing kind of medium to the smaller side of meatballs, which means I'm gonna get 14 out of this. So there's plenty here to make all kinds of meatballs. You got plenty for this whole casserole. Um, if you made them a little smaller, you could probably squeeze out a few more. However, I tried to go for this size because this is a decent size to eat. Um, when you're eating these, you're going to break them up anyway. So it's just going to be one of those things where just roll them out as best you can. Try to get a uniform size and just see how many you think are good for the size you're making them. But 14 worked for me. It's, you know, perfect for the size pan I'm using because we're gonna use a nine by 13 pan. So there's a lot of room in that thing to hold stuff. So along the way, at some point, you're gonna to wanna to preheat your oven because we're gonna put it at 375 degrees because this casserole is gonna to need to bake for at least around 40 minutes. And you wanna check it to make sure that it's actually cooked at that point because the meatballs are gonna take almost a half an hour to cook, but then you have hash brown and other stuff in here that also has to cook along with the other things we put in it. So we just want to make sure that we give it a decent amount of time, but we want to check it before we pull it out of the oven. So that's why I say about 40 minutes, 375 degrees should be fine for this because the meatballs are going to be riding on top of this. So they're going to be cooking and it is covered with foil. So that's going to keep the heat inside as it's going. So keep going with those meatballs and pretty soon we will have them all rolled out. And once they're done, we're going to set these to the side until we're ready for them. But as you can see, you get a lot out of a pound of ground beef when you're doing these about medium size. It's really not bad at all. So now I'm on my last one here and then we're going to get ready to move on to the next step. So once we're done with this, we're going to move this to the side and go for our cheese. Now I have about four ounces of Colby Jack cheese here. Now, yes, I could do something with a grater, shred this. It's really not necessary because it's going to cook up in the oven anyway, as long as you cut it in smaller pieces. And it's a lot easier to clean up the knife than actually getting the grater out. So I'm just going to slice this into smaller pieces and have it ready to go because I'm just going to distribute them over the top of the hash browns when I go to put them into this mix. So really, it doesn't have to be anything but maybe just some slivers of cheese that you're going to drop on top. So go ahead and just cut them into slices, then go ahead and turn it around and cut it the other way. And you're going to have small pieces that you can just distribute all over the place when you're ready to do this. So, as you can see, four ounces of cheese ready to go. No muss, no fuss. And we're ready to move on. We're going to need to get out our baking dish. Now, like I said, mine's like a 9 by 13 or so. So we're going to go ahead and coat this with some nonstick cooking spray because we want to make sure the stuff doesn't set up shop because it just makes it a lot easier to wash this later. And then once that's done, we're going to bring in our hash browns. Now you're going to need at least 26 ounces. You can add more if you want to, which is fine. Um, I say put a really good thick layer of these across the bottom because this is kind of like the base of what you're cooking here. So we want to really have a hefty amount of it in there. 
And if they are frozen, break them up as you're going. You don't want any really huge hunks that stuck together and just don't want to break up. Now, once you get that in, spread them out evenly, use your hand. And then we're going to put about like eight tablespoons of butter on top of this and just distribute it across the top to where you got like two rows of four on each row. Just so when these are cooking, it's just going to give some flavor for the hash browns. But just go ahead and put that across the top. And then when we're done with that, we're going to bring in that Colby Jack cheese that we cut up and spread that out kind of evenly all over. And just make sure you don't miss any of the corners or the sides so that way there's a little bit of flavor from this going in all over the place. And then after we're done with that, we're gonna bring in those meatballs that we made because they're gonna go on top. So as you can see, when you're spreading this cheese out, it does go a long way because even if you're just using basically a half a block, which is the four ounces, it's really not bad. So you got quite a bit there and it's a lot of flavor packed into this. Now, when you go to put your meatballs in, you can assemble them however you want to. I'm just basically doing them in rows. Um, we have an odd number of these. Being there's 14, it's not gonna be like totally straight across because you kind of want to do this like in three rows for the fact that you can distribute it, have meat all the way across the top of this thing. So just go ahead and put them in. And if you have not preheated your oven to 375 degrees by now, you do need to. So make sure that that's done. Now after this, we're gonna bring in a can of cheddar cheese soup. Um, if you never used this before, it's really cool. It has great taste. We also are gonna put on our ranch dressing. So you have a packet of ranch dressing, make sure it's broken up so you can sprinkle it on top and just sprinkle this all over the place. And then when it's done after this, we'll put that can of cheese right on top of it. The good thing is with all of this going in there, it's like the cheese is gonna mix with the ranch and mix, mix with the can of cheese and all and the butter to kind of give it a little bit of a, a liquid to help all this stuff cook which is really great so just make sure you get all of that ranch all over the place um it doesn't matter if it hits the meatballs because it's going to actually cook with them too because they're going to have a little bit of juice coming out of them and then take the cheddar cheese soup and just spoon it in and try to get it between the meatballs all over the place because once you spoon it in you can't take the spoon later and just like spread it around to make sure that it's kind of coated so just work through this and get out every bit that you can from that can. Um, the good thing about this is, is like, you know, as you're spooning it on, you can control where it's going and that's great. But as this is baking, you know, there's things in here that are going to be, become more liquidy. It's going to help this mix through to everything is going to like mix into one. So it's not going to be like all these different layers of stuff. It'll become one big mix, but just don't waste any of that cheese. So once I get all of mine in there, I'd like, scrape that can like you don't know what and then I take the spoon and just move it around to where I've got a really good coating of this all over the place because that way you know the flavor kind of goes everywhere and what's really good is you got a couple different kinds of flavor of cheese in this so that really works now after we do this we're gonna go ahead with some heavy cream and you're gonna need at least one and a half cups of it because that's gonna be your liquid liquid that's gonna help this all glue together so just take it open it up and pour it over top and just work your way through this to where that way it's sinking in going into the cheese it's going down into the hash browns is doing everything it needs to mix through and the last thing you're going to have to do after this is literally put some foil over this to put it in the oven and it's going to bake and when it comes back all this stuff is just going to blend together because of the heat and the bubbling and the cooking in the oven and it's going to turn out really amazing and this has such a great cheesy ranchy taste but then you got your beef in there with the meatballs and everything just really works together to taste really wonderful. And that's the best thing because that's basically what a casserole is. You're getting such a blend of all these things in one place. It's really easy. And this is what mine looked like on a plate. And I got to tell you, this had a great taste. And I think you just might like this one. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please like and subscribe. And if you get a chance, check out the Southern Mountain Kitchen website where you can get a free recipe, check out the cookbooks available from the Southern Mountain Kitchen, and if you'd like to, you could order a cookbook at a discounted price cheaper than Amazon with shipping that is also cheaper than Amazon. So if you get a chance, check it out and I hope you have a great day.